thank everybody for uh, joining us here this afternoon. We wanted to provide an update as to the latest information that we know as a result of uh, last night's officer-involved shooting. What we've been able to determine thus far is on January, January 4th at approximately 10.36 p.m., the Albuquerque Police Department received information of a robbery and or burglary occurring in progress at the Catholic Center located at Coors in St. Joseph's Northwest. A call came into APD 911 Emergency Operations Center uh, that a security guard was possibly being held hostage. Officers were then dispatched as the call was entered into the system at 10.38 p.m. The first officers arrived on scene within two minutes. Officers responding to the scene included on-duty personnel as well as officers who were on their way home uh, due to the fact that it was an in-progress felony crime. Initial information that the Albuquerque Police Department received was third hand through the security company from the security guard uh, for which he worked there at St. Pius. The company is receiving information uh, from a night security guard who was working alone at the Archdiocese Administrative Offices. Officers were not exactly sure where in the complex the security guard was and immediately began setting up uh, positions securing the entire campus of uh, the St. Joseph's Church as well as St. Pius. There's a picture behind me here just kind of showing the, the size and, and scope of the, of the location. Um, this is the St. Pius complex. The first officer responded. One officer took a position down here on the far southeast corner. Another officer set up in the far northeast corner because they weren't exactly sure where on the complex or if it was even possibly the church across the street. One officer was actually across the street at the church. Um, you want to go to the next picture? This is a little bit closer uh, picture of the building where uh, the uh, security guard was being held and uh, the officer had the contact with the suspect. Officers immediately began checking the entire area trying to locate the security guard at which time a single officer began searching what's described as the administrative offices of the Archdiocese, and that was located at the southeast corner of the complex. The officer had parked his vehicle right along this service road here and had began walking north, uh, checking this building to see if he could locate the, uh, the security guard. As the officer uh, walked along the east side of the building, a man walked out of a rear door on the east side of the building and moved away from the officer. The officer observed the man wearing blue jeans, a backpack, wearing a full face mask, um, disguising himself, uh, and wearing gloves. At that time, um, the uh, offender produced a handgun and began firing at the officer. The officer retreated. As the officer was, was, was retreating, he drew his firearm and fired back at the suspect. The suspect was hit multiple times and died at the scene. Upon further investigation, officers were able to determine that the suspect had confronted the lone security guard inside the Archdiocese administrative offices, at which time he was uh, assaulted by the, uh, the man, tied up, and at the time he was tied up, the uh, offender held a gun to the security guard's head and wanted to know exactly uh, where in the building money and or the safes were kept. We have a still picture that we were able to capture off of a security system inside of the Archdiocese offices. And uh, you can see the security guard here, uh, and you can see the offender here having his face uh, covered by a mask. He's got a backpack on. Inside the backpack, we were able to uh, locate additional um, tools that would be used in the commission of this crime to include uh, additional restraints. Uh, burglary tools to include a pro crowbar as well as, uh, as bolt cutters. The offender then took the uh, uh, security guard to another area of the building. In that other area of the building, uh, there is no videotape. It's, this is the only area where we're able to actually capture uh, both the, uh, the victim and the offender on tape. Um, he then left the area where the security guard was and went to go find the safe. Um, and remove that from another area of the building. The security guard, while restrained, was able to call his dispatch center. Security dispatch personnel could hear through an open line that something was occurring at the complex and notified the Albuquerque Police Department about the in-progress crime. 
The security guard uh, did receive injuries uh, because he was assaulted um, by the offender in this case who was trying to get, get, gather information about the location of, of monies. The security guard uh, was treated at the scene by paramedics. Uh, he asked and did remain at the scene throughout the evening to assist investigators with the investigation. The suspect um, is a white male in his late 20s. He's believed to be from outside of Albuquerque. Uh, he was armed with a revolver. The revolver is a 357, uh, very similar to this one. He did fire the firearm multiple times at the officer. Um, luckily for us, it appears that uh, after he had fired the gun several times, the gun malfunctioned uh, and did not continue to function as a firearm. Probably resulting in uh, the officer still being with us today. He was found to be in possession of a, the safe that was stolen from inside the complex, burglary tools, a crowbar, an additional mask, and additional restraints. The investigation uh, is being conducted by a multi jurisdictional team, including representatives from the New Mexico State Police, the Vernon County <coughs> Sheriff's Department, the District Attorney's Office, the Office of the Medical Examiner. And the city's independent review officer did respond and remained on the scene uh, throughout the morning hours to assist in the investigation. The officer has been placed on the uh, standard leave as per protocol of the Albuquerque Police Department. The officer, we're not going to release his name yet, either at this point in time until we can get a positive identity on the offender. And again, that is also for the officer's safety. The officer is a seven-year veteran of the Albuquerque Police Department. As soon as we can, we will release the identities of both the officer and the offender. Uh, of course, also we want to make sure that we uh, make sure that next of kin of the uh, the offender is notified uh, when it's appropriate. The investigation continues uh, by the Albuquerque Police Department to see if we can identify if there were additional offenders uh, or the offender acted alone in this particular situation. Within the last few minutes, the reason for our delay, we've received additional information. That a second suspect has been taken in custody uh, down in Rio Doso, New Mexico. So this investigation is still ongoing and very, very active. We're not sure if there are additional suspects besides the one that has been taken in custody at this point in time. I think um, this is a, a case that really shows the danger of, of being a police officer, a law enforcement officer in a large me major metropolitan area. Um, I think we all see by this incident how easily we could have lost an officer last night. Ogden, Utah did lose an officer in the performance of his duties last night. And of course, our, our thoughts and prayers go to that community and to that officer. But what we saw last night was an officer doing his job involved in a very violent confrontation uh, by an offender who was armed with a gun and had no doubt in his mind or question of whether he was willing to use that gun against an officer. The officer in this particular case uh, responded in a very admirable manner uh, to a very dangerous situation and we're very grateful uh, that he had the opportunity to go home to his family last night. And with that, are there any questions that I can answer The for second you? suspect, um, was he, did you guys believe he was there at the time? Uh, I'm not going to talk time? about uh, the ongoing investigation. Um, we had reason to believe that there may be additional persons involved, hence the reason why we brought out a very large investigative team to assist in the investigation last night. The investigation has been continuing since 10.30 last night throughout the night into the morning hours. We have been receiving assistance from other departments um, from throughout southern New Mexico. Uh, we'll continue with the investigation. A couple of things that are kind of unique about this case. The mannerisms of this particular offender are very unique. We do not feel that this is the first type of time this person has committed this type of crime. So we will be reaching out to other departments from throughout the southwestern part of the United States. Just based on his actions and his preparation, uh, it appears that there's, this is probably not the first time he's done this. So we will be continuing our investigation. Obviously, one person in custody at this point in time will continue investigating that and we'll see if that is the only other person involved or if there are others involved. Do you know how much money he would have made away with? I do. Um, he would have made away with absolutely nothing. There's nothing at all in that safe? There's nothing in the safe. 
Chief, is that time code correct? Are we looking at, can you explain to us, is, is this 30 minutes later that the call comes in? Is that 10, 10, 42 seconds? Uh, I don't know about the authenticity of the, the time mark. And again, it's not uncommon for those not to be synced. Obviously, as we continue with the investigation, that will be one of the things that we will tie together as we tie together the sequence of events. Uh, I do know that the offender was inside uh, the Archdiocese offices for a period of time. Again, that will be part of uh, a total reconstruction that is uh, normally done in a case like this. Can you also talk about how did he sneak up on this guard? Are we talking about just ambushed him? Did he pretend like he needed help when the guard went out there? Or how, how does that happen? Um, again, can't get into specifics because we're still in the process of, of recreating it, but it appears that the, uh, the guard was on his uh, normal rounds checking the, the complex. Again, this is a, a very large multi-building facility, uh, at which time he was confronted by the suspect and uh, immediately battered by the suspect. And how big is the safe we're talking about here? Um, probably the best way to describe it is a, a safe about the size of a microwave oven. What makes you believe that he's from out of town or is not from New Mexico? Um, again, can't get into specifics because of the fact that there may be additional suspects out there. Uh, but at this point in time, um, we believe he's from outside of the Albuquerque metropolitan area. And again, hopefully we'll be able to confirm that here uh, as the investigation continues. Did he drop the safe before he fired the shots at the officer? Is that the sequence of events how that went? Uh, again, um, that will be part of the reconstruction to see exactly uh, the, the sequence of events and, and how that took place, um, and, and hopefully we'll have more information on that very soon. Do you believe he is from southern New Mexico? That's where this other guy has been found? Again, um, there are some questions about the identity of the uh, suspect in this case. <coughs> um, he has used uh, additional aliases in the past, and because of that, we are working very closely with the Office of Medical Examiner and our criminalist people to get a positive identity. Um, anytime you have people use other people's identities, you're not exactly sure which is the real one. That seems to be the case with this particular individual. So one of the, the main things we need to do is, is get a positive identity so we know who this person is, so we can notify uh, his next of kin, and that will also help send us in the proper direction to do this investigation. Did this shooting happen um, out on that dirt lot behind the diocese on the east side? Okay, so go back one picture. The, uh, the confrontation between the officer uh, and the suspect happened in this area right here. Right along this line where you see where the vegetation changes, this starts on the downward slope. So this is all a downward slope heading in this direction. Uh, the confrontation was right here at the beginning of the downward slope, and the officer was out basically in the wide open, and the officer had to uh, try to retreat back to an area for cover uh, back in these areas, these bushes back here. Chief, did you guys find any kind of vehicle for the suspect, or do you believe the second suspect was maybe driving that vehicle? I'm um, not going to comment on that at this time because of the, again, ongoing possible investigation of additional people. Approximately how far away from the building was that confrontation, Chief? Um, my guess would be probably in the 30 to 40 feet range, um, just based on space and items that we can see out there. Chief, we haven't had a, a department shooting since August. Can you characterize the review process that you have now in place and, and uh, your assessment of it as it moves forward in that investigation? Well, um, obviously the, the, the PERF recommendations and review process is, is what we'll be following. Um, it started immediately with the multi-jurisdictional response team, the independent review officer responding to and overseeing the, the, the investigation that happened last night. Uh, the officer is no longer placed on a standard three-day leave. Uh, what will happen is there will be an uh, administrative review, uh, and of course anybody who participated in the investigation is allowed to come to that review. It will include a review of the evidence, known facts at the time, and then there's an executive committee uh, of members, senior members of the department and psychological staff who will make the decision uh, about the officer returning to work. As always, the case will be presented in its entirety to the district attorney uh, for review and determination uh, at that level. And of course, the IRO, uh, Bill Deaton, will do a complete review of the case as well and submit his findings to the Police Oversight Commission. Chief, has this officer been involved in any other shootings in his career here? Uh, I do not believe so, no. You mentioned the aliases the suspect had. Was he known to this department or other state agencies? 
Um, at this point in time, I'll, we're, we're still trying to figure that out. So it looks like most of his contacts have been with other agencies outside of the Albuquerque Metro area. What about the guards? Was he still tied up once officers got inside? Did he get loose somehow? Mm -hmm. What happened to him? Um, again, not going to talk about that till we get all of our interviews complete and do the reconstruction. Uh, I can say that the, the guard uh, was assaulted. Uh, he did receive medical attention, but he, he opted and wanted to stay and, and assist us in this investigation. Now, obviously, he was very shook up uh, about it, uh, but uh, he uh, did some pretty quick thinking on his feet uh, that probably saved his life as well. When you say assaulted, are we talking like, I'm going to kill you if you don't tell me what it is, or actually like punch, knocked out, hit? Both physically and verbally assaulted. Um, are you related to the name of the security company? Um, I don't know what it is. I'll check with staff and see if they feel comfortable with that. Okay. Thank you all very much. Hey everybody, we have a news release for you. As soon as we do have it out, we will we will send uh, we will send out an email um, with all that information, and we'll check on the security company name too. We'll send that out on the email as well. Thank you. Yeah, I would I would like to understand that.